Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about the electrical system that I'm designing for this bus that I'm converting into my future home on wheels. Now, I love off-grid systems so much that Stephanie is letting me make an entire video all on my own about what I'm gonna be doing in this bus. I also want to show you guys a couple tips that could save you a lot of money when designing your own system. So hang on, uh, it's gonna be a technical video, but it's gonna be good. I'm also gonna be talking about batteries, which is a huge part of an off-grid system. So if you're in the market for batteries right now, you need to watch this. Now, I cannot wait to start building the system, but first it must be designed. And here is where the designing happens. The electrical system in an off-grid home can be one of the most daunting things to design and one of the most expensive things to build. Visualizing your whole system on paper is probably the best way to be able to see what components you need and then build a budget around that. This is our system on paper. It's rough, but it helps me to see the components I need and to search out what I might be missing. In any off-grid system, there are two sides, the AC or alternating current and the DC or direct current side. In the world of off-grid systems, we need to utilize both the AC and the DC side to our advantage. DC is important because we have to store energy into batteries and batteries are inherently DC. On the DC side, something to consider when planning your system is your voltage. That's right, 12 volts is not the only option out there. Understanding voltage can save you a lot of money on components and make your whole system more efficient. Now this is something to consider before you build out your system because some components like your inverter are voltage specific. So you wanna make this decision before you start buying things. Now, if you've already done your wiring, you could still change your voltage because whenever you go up, that's okay. But if you're going down, you would have to have larger cables. So your main options to really consider are 12, 24 and 48 volts. 12 volts is common for the automotive industry and for very small off-grid systems. 24 volts is for medium-sized and then 48 volts is for larger systems like homes. Now the reasoning behind this is for the same volume of power, which is a watt, if your voltage is higher, your amperage can be lower and it costs more to make a component able to handle a higher amperage but it doesn't typically cost more to make a component handle higher voltage. So by stepping up your system's voltage, you're gonna decrease the amperage throughout and save money on components. A great example of the cost savings is with solar charge controllers. I have 1,640 watts of solar on the roof of my bus. Now Victron makes this really nice calculator, which allows us to figure out which charge controller we need based on our solar setup. I've inputted the information found at the back of my solar panel and how I plan to wire them. At 12 volts, it recommends a 100 amp unit that costs $1,059 Canadian. Watch what happens when I change the system voltage. When I change it to 24 volts, it recommends a 60 amp unit for $666. And finally, at 48 volts, it recommends a 35 amp unit, which only costs $450. Now you might think the 100 amp unit would charge your batteries faster or better, but it's actually quite the opposite. With simple math, we can calculate how much total power is coming into our batteries. So whenever we're calculating electricity, we're using volts times amps, which equals watts. For a 12 volt system at 100 amps, that's going to be 1200 watts. At 24 volts at 60 amps, that's 1440 watts and 48 volts at times 35 amps equals 1,680 watts. A $1,060 unit will give you 1,200 watts. A $666 unit will give you 1,440 watts, and a $450 unit will give you 1,680 watts. The less you spend, the more you get. You starting to see what I'm getting to here? What's great about solar charge controllers is they can take in different voltages. So you simply get more out of them at a higher voltage. So another example of these cost savings is inverters. Here we have two identical units with different input voltages. This cost difference 
comes back to it being more expensive to handle higher amperages. For a 3000 watt unit to use 12 volts, it needs to handle 250 amps DC. A 48 volt unit would only need to handle 62 and a half amps. So these inverter units also have chargers built in. Okay, so let's do some more math. The 12 volt unit can do 120 amps and the 48 volt unit can do 35 amps. So if we do 12 times 120, that equals 1440 watts. Now, if we do 48 times 35, that equals 1680. So the cheaper unit does more. Instead of searching for a cheaper alternative to a quality product, or really searching out for some Black Friday deals, increasing your system voltage will save you a ton of money. So if you do this and you find a great deal, you're gonna save a lot of money. You shouldn't have to compromise your system with cheaper components to keep it under budget. Understanding things like this could be the key to get you into your budget that you want, but still have high quality products. Now, what about 12 volt appliances? There's gonna be a couple things in your build that are 12 volts and there are no substitutes. This is where DC to DC converters come in. A DC to DC converter allows you to take one voltage and simply spit out another one. So here's an example of a 48 to 12 volt unit that can supply 30 amps. So along with your components being less expensive, you'll also be able to save on wire because with a lower amperage, you can go with a smaller gauge wire, which is less expensive. There are pros and cons, just like everything else in life. Increasing your voltage has a lot of pros, but the main con that I see is danger. As you increase voltage, you increase the chance that you shock yourself. If electricity runs through your arms and across your heart, it could kill you. So if you're not sure what you're doing, consult a professional. Now I think it's beneficial to stick with 12 volts if your system is so small that you can't find an inverter that suits your needs. If you're gonna be under 3000 watts, there aren't as many 48 volt and 24 volt inverters out there. And so that's a situation where you stick with 12 volts. Another scenario where you might wanna stick with 12 volts is if you're building an off-grid system in a vehicle that has a 12 volt alternator and you're trying to charge your batteries with that alternator. Now, I would actually really recommend against this. Your alternator isn't designed to charge huge batteries and you could destroy it in the process. I would recommend keeping those systems separate or you could actually, if you have the space under your hood, add an additional alternator at a different voltage to charge your main system using your engine. So let's talk about batteries, my favorite subject. Stephanie is tired of hearing me talk about batteries. This is an area where you can save a ton of money. If you're currently in the market for a Battleborn battery or similar pre-built 12 volt battery, hold up. I'm gonna save you a bunch of money if you pay attention. You could save thousands of dollars by building your battery yourself. And if you intend on using more than one battery in your system, you're already building a battery yourself. So why not save money? Now the only difference is understanding parallel and series connections. And if you're installing solar panels or are gonna wire them together, you need to know this anyways. Series connections increase your voltage and parallel connections increase your amperage. In a series connection, we take the positive and negative side of a battery and connect it together. In a parallel connection, we take the positive sides, connect them together and negative sides and connect them together. That's the only difference. Okay, I wanna show you guys something. This is a 3.2 volt, 280 amp hour battery. I bought it from Alibaba, direct from China. This battery is at 3.2 volts. So four of these together in series make a 12 volt battery. So a box of four of these cost me about $560 Canadian with taxes, duties, and everything. You would need three Battleborn batteries to get close to the same capacity as four of these. It would cost about $2,800 Canadian to equal the capacity this has in Battleborn batteries. Now, Battleborn is not exclusive to this price. 
almost all pre-made 12 volt batteries are up and around a thousand dollars per 100 amp hours now this price is crazy high pre-made batteries do have their advantages primarily that a lot of them are water sealed and can be used in a marine environment the marine guys who might be watching this if you can't create a waterproof enclosure you might be stuck paying those crazy prices so the biggest con to these are lead time they take a long time to ship it took me about three months to get them in if you aren't able to get your hands on one of these which i do understand waiting three four months for batteries to come in from china is kind of ridiculous i would recommend server rack batteries they actually make server rack batteries at 24 and 48 volts pre-made and they have a circuit breaker on the batteries you can shut off the battery so that you have no power at the terminals. So you're never at risk of shocking yourself while building it. You keep the batteries off, assemble it. And then when you're ready, you can turn them on, which is really nice. Another great source for batteries is batteryhookup.com. That's where I got my lithium titanate cells that I used in my starter battery build for the school bus. So in my setup, I have 16 of these that are going to be run in series. That's going to create a 48 volt battery at 280 amp hours. That equals 13,440 watts. I'm not using propane at all in my bus. And so I'm relying heavily on um, electricity and diesel to heat and operate everything in my home. I could not afford this large of a battery system if I was purchasing pre-made 12 volt batteries. I have the equivalent of like $13,000 worth of Battleborn batteries right here. I get why people think that lead acid is cheaper than lithium because they're looking at the prices of these pre-made batteries and I get it, but this is cheaper than lead acid. These cells will retain 80% of their charge after 3000 cycles. Now, if we compare that to lead acid, lead acid will degrade after let's say 800 cycles and you can only use 50% of your capacity. With these, I can use 100% of my capacity. But if you wanna learn more about solar chemistries and other options out there and other ways to set them up, I'd really actually recommend Will Prouse's solar channel. He's very thorough with batteries, especially pre-made. If you are stuck on buying a pre-made battery, he buys and tears apart every one of them he sees on the market, and he tells you if they're good or not. I hope that this information is useful to you. I hope that you are able to save some money on your build, build an awesome system, and not have to break the bank. But thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.